G'day YouTube, 1MJ here and welcome back. Alright, Friday sort of just after lunchtime here in Australia, market's up ever so slightly. I mean, you know, half a percent move, but we're now at that $2.2 trillion mark. A lot of just sort of sideways kind of crabbing movement at the moment, from the big players at least, like Ethereum and Bitcoin, they're not really moving too much, but we have the altcoins that are running pretty, well, some of them are running pretty hard anyway. Right, Bitcoin dominance rose ever so slightly, 41%. Uh, volume is up a little bit, so $317 billion, which is not too bad. And the gas prices, they're just hovering around sort of five bucks at the moment. And again, that's a very basic transaction. Depending where you are, that could be a whole lot more. But let's have a look at the market. We can see it's a bit of a mixed bag. Some things are up, some things are down. Again, the market's generally up half a percent. So we'll probably have a couple of nice movers. What is the top movers in the top 100? Let's have a look. Shiba Inu, good lord. So it is up 36.8%. And the reason for that is, is that it has been listed on Coinbase. And so, yeah, people have decided to pile in. And that's usually what happens when coins get added to, excuse me, new exchanges, and particularly big ones. You, gen to, you generally see a bit of a pump. Now look, anyone who's getting into Shiba Inu or Dogecoin or anything like that, I hope it does well for you. But there really is nothing fundamentally about either of them that really, they've got no practical use. So just, you know, buyer beware. I'm not, I'm not offering you any financial advice. I can't because I'm not a financial advisor. But my personal opinion is if you can jump in and make a quick flip, Awesome, that's that's great. Congratulations to you. I did it with Dogecoin twice last year. Got in, doubled my money, got out. Got back in, doubled my money, got out. It wasn't a lot of money that I put in. And look, if I had have held for a lot longer, I could have made unbelievable gains. But, you know, that's the way it is. I knew Dogecoin didn't have any real practical use and neither does Shiba Inu. So just be very careful investing in these meme, stock, in meme kind of coins. You know, you might be one of the lucky ones and make some crazy money, although I don't think crazy money's going to be made at this stage of the cycle. Could be wrong. Really, it's getting into Dogecoin or, you know, maybe Shiba Inu, I don't know, in the bottom of the bear market when it's literally priced at nothing and nobody wants it anymore and then maybe you get lucky and all of a sudden again it becomes a trending thing but that's why it's spiking at the moment but just again buyer beware audius nice pump so up 24 percent and that has to do with Katy perry nas and jason derulo have invested in crypto music platform audius so that's why it's got a nice pump there so again continues to grow doing quite nicely it's something i invested in quite uh some time ago it didn't perform well it actually lost money i think i had a 50 percent loss and i still bought it uh, way under its all-time high and i ended up selling half at a loss and keeping half I'm glad I kept that half because it's doing quite nicely at the moment, but I'm obviously kicking myself that I sold the half at a loss when I could have held it and been doing uh, nicely. But I had a reasonable size bag anyway, nothing too crazy. But, you know, I held on to it and I'm glad uh, and it is a long-term hold for me and so we'll wait and see how it does. It seems like some really big names are getting on board, which is really good. All right, Adam pumping quite nicely. Uh, AVAX is just on an absolute rip and tear. And we've got a couple of stories that I'll bring to you uh, about AVAX. Algorand doing nice, eGold, Zilliqa, Luna, Tron. So again, this is all the layer one kind of platforms that are generally doing quite nice. I mean, Audius isn't a layer one. Shiba Inu, I guess, kind of is, but it doesn't really do anything. But look, not too bad. Polkadot, Tezos, there you can see. Celsius making a bit of move, so quite nice. Some good gains there. Nothing sort of too crazy, really, other than the Shiba Inu one. And again, that's because they got added to Coinbase. What about losses then? What's not performing so well? All right, Curve Token down a little bit. Telcoin, Filecoin. Hedera, uh, Bitcoin Cash, Phantom Maker. Look, single digit losses, only a couple of sort of high single digit losses, and then all it's, it's all low single digit losses. So nothing too crazy. And again, a lot of these coins have been pumping. We looked at that the other day. They've been doing quite well for the last month or so. And there you can see, of course, they're pulling back a little bit. And even Solana continues to go down. So $148 
it pumped really, really hard. It'll be interesting to see where it goes. It made it over sort of $200, I think. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if we saw this down near $100. I'm not saying it's going to get to $100. I'm just saying I wouldn't be surprised if it gets there. It could even go lower. It could have a really big pullback. But I don't think so. I'd have to look at the charts, and that's probably something I'll do. But just taking a guess, I'm going to say it'll probably go around down to around about the $130 mark, maybe $120 mark. Look, it could be at the bottom right now, and everything starts to pump and it goes back up. But... Again, it just pumped so hard that nothing pumps, you know, that hard and just stays there forever. But, you know, this may be the bottom for sale. We'll have to have a look. All right, let's go over to the Bitcoin chart. Again, Bitcoin, you know, just kind of jumping around a little bit, but it's just really back where it was before, around that kind of $48,000 mark. You know, whether we're going to have any big major moves in the uh, too distant future, I don't know. It's really hard to say at the moment. It's just chopping uh, around. But it is ever so slightly making its way back up again to around the $50,000 mark. But I think there's going to be some resistance there. I definitely see there being some resistance around this kind of $55,000 mark. It's just right in the middle of that. And you can see it's been used as support a few times. Uh, hence why it'll probably be a bit of a resistance point for us uh, with that coming up. All right, open C. So if you didn't know, there was a big kind of scandal, I guess, at OpenSea. One of the executives there was getting, you know, information about the next NFT project to be listed on uh, OpenSea. He was then going and buying those NFTs uh, and then quickly flipping them when they came on to, uh, to OpenSea. Now, what we need to remember is in the traditional business world, that's called insider trading. Highly illegal, you'll go to jail and all sorts of things will happen to you. They'll come and seize, you know, assets and like all sorts of stuff. Because there's no regulation for crypto whatsoever, it's not illegal. But it's good to see that OpenSea have come out and they have basically released him, fired him, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think that's the right thing to do. We want to make this space clean anyway before they have to come in and regulate too hard and things like this i think go a long way to doing that and you know again i'm sure this person was probably making good money anyway they may have been uh had shares in the company and like all sorts of stuff i, I just don't understand why they did that there's plenty of money to be made in cryptocurrencies anyway without you having to go and do doing something that again would be highly illegal in the the normal world but came over to crypto and did it. And I heard uh, some people speaking on, I think around the blockchain this morning, and it was for like 18 Ethereum or something like that. Now 18 Ethereum is worth a bit, but I'm gonna say this person probably bought the 18 Ethereum for you know next to nothing. It's probably had them for a number of years at probably worth $100 or less. So that works out to be, and if it was $100, it could be, maybe I'm wrong and he bought them later or maybe even earlier. But if you bought them at $100 each, then that was $1,800 worth of Ethereum to uh, kind of get a gain, or not Ethereum, $1,800 you know, in dollar terms to get a gain. You know, was it worth it? Anyway, doesn't matter. I'm glad that they did this. Again, we need to make sure that our space is clean before regulators have to come in and you know go really hard on the system. And there's another story coming up that kind of leans towards why some people consider it a scam because this is pretty scammy behavior not by OpenSea by that uh, executive so I'm glad that they took that action all right Canadian political party leader says he supports Bitcoin ahead of elections how far we have come how the times the tide has turned as they would say not the times how the tide has turned if you went back 18 months ago you wouldn't have found a politician anywhere in the world, really, that would have been, you know, trying to talk up cryptocurrencies. It would have been nearly impossible. Now, we have got someone who's, you know, going to run for prime minister, I guess, or something like that, uh, of Canada, and coming out and saying they support Bitcoin. Obviously, we've got uh, the guy from, I can't remember, Bukele, that's his name. You know, he's come out, he's legalized it. Ukraine's possibly going to do it. Other countries are looking at doing it. Panama and, you know, Brazil and, you know, who knows, and Mexico and you know, whatever. Things are starting to change. And while it can seem 
slow in some regards. In other regards, it seems very fast. Again, back in 2017, that was only four years ago, you'd be lucky if you could find a politician that would really kind of back it. And now there's tons of politicians. So four years uh, is a while, but in the grand scheme of things, it's actually not that long at all. It's, it's a cycle. And again, this is where we are now. Things are really starting to move uh, and move quite fast. All right, over a billion dollars worth of Ethereum have been burned since the London upgrade. So that's over 300,000 ETH that have been burned and that's been in the last six weeks. I, th I know we were deflationary for at least a day. I'm not sure exactly where we are now, but as Ethereum heats up, more and more gets burned. And again, we get into a deflationary period. I'm not sure we, where we are exactly now, but I brought a story to you a while ago that there was a day where Ethereum went deflationary. And I think there's about 100 million Ethereum out there. Well, there's 300,000 less of them. So there still might be 100 million now, but I'm going to say we had 1,300 million worth of Ethereum and now we're down 300,000 less Ethereum. So very, very interesting and obviously leads to a likely price explosion of ETH at some stage, particularly as things start to heat up. More and more people come into Ethereum. They are going to other chains as well because of the gas fees. That is something that needs to be fixed. And look, with all the Layer 2 stuff coming, and again, hopefully ETH 2.0 to be rolled out, excuse me, in December later this year, I think at some stage you would think Ethereum, oh God, excuse me, I've got the hiccups and the burps. Uh, it should, yeah, have a price explosion at some stage. I think it's a lot like Bitcoin at the moment. I think it's happening with a lot of these cryptos. They're just kind of simmering. It's like, again, you know, you turn the kettle on. If you've got a see-through kettle, you know, you don't see anything at first, even though it's heating up, and then you see one bubble. And then you see one bubble. And then you see two bubbles. And then you three three bubbles, and it's starting to simmer, and then all of a sudden, it'll just explode and start to go off. Now, don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean Bitcoin goes from 47000 to $100,000, kind of like that, but it will slowly start to simmer, and I do think we're going to see that kind of blow off top. At some stage, I don't think we're going to have a slow market burn forever. At some stage, people are going to start to see that, oh man, these things are still going up and they're going up by a lot more than what general stocks would and they're going to jump on board and that's when it's going to get crazy. But look, something bad could happen as well before we could have a big market crash and maybe it just never eventuates out. But my gut feeling is that I think we're going to get to another blow off top uh, and go through another bear market. The super cycle thing, definitely possible i'm just not completely sold on it at the moment i haven't ruled it out though all right as i said before ecb president christine lagarde insists cryptos are not currencies calls them highly speculative and suspicious and again we go back to this open sea stuff this is what makes people think it's all suspicious and scammy and all the rest of it this doesn't help now this isn't a specific cryptocurrency itself but it's all you know it's all the same thing to someone who doesn't really understand it and doesn't want to understand it. Now, I agree with some of what she's saying. So cryptos are not currencies. No, not in the old traditional term. They're not. She calls them highly speculative. Absolutely. A lot of them are. I mean, they're all speculative at the moment. We haven't. We don't have regulation, so how can we know what their true value is worth? Uh, and suspicious? Well, this kind of stuff is fairly suspicious. So again, she is right in a sense. Here's where she's wrong though. We're moving away from a pure monetary system. Like there's already talk they're going to make stocks come to the blockchain and you're going to be, be able to buy pieces of a stock. I really do think that money in the future is not going to be, it's not going to be money anymore. You're going to be able to buy a share in let's say Tesla. And because you're going to have that on your phone, most likely is where it's going to be. And it's going to be able to be broken down into, you know, little bits and pieces. You're actually going to be able to go to the store. This is what I believe is coming way down the line. It's the same as cryptocurrencies, but currencies will be investments. Investments will be currencies. They'll all be one in the same. You will be able to take your, again, Tesla share. And I think you're going to be able to go to the shop and you're going to be able to buy something with it. With just a fraction of it, it's going to be broken down. That is where I think we are headed in the future. I think, you know, 
kind of currencies i think eventually they will die and i think it will be just your investments you'll invest in whatever it is it maybe bitcoin's still around again this could be a hundred years away i don't know but this is just where i see things going i think you're going to be able to put your you know invest in different things there'll probably still be some kind of money who knows but i, I think it will be gone and i think it'll just be again you will you know take some of your tesla stock and you buy get some apple stock and then take some of your apple stock and you buy all these different things but you'll be able to go to the shops and there'll be some kind of baseline credit maybe it's still money maybe it's not maybe it's satoshis uh, and that's how you will uh, buy things i just don't know if fiat currencies the way we see them today will be around they could be but it's you know just something that i've thought about so cryptos some are currencies you know like the stable coins they are 100 currencies that's exactly what they are but i wouldn't really call stable coins cryptos so I would say that she's right. I don't think Bitcoin's really a currency. It can be used like a currency. I don't think Litecoin's really a currency. Again, it can be used. Currencies generally need to be stable. You can't have something that's super volatile uh, and call it a currency, but it doesn't mean they can't be used like one. And that is where I see this going. But again, I agree with some of this, but I think, and I've said this before, a lot of the people that you see coming out and bashing Bitcoin and cryptos, there's some truth to what they're saying again they definitely are speculative there's definitely plenty that are super suspicious and things like that but you have a look at the people that are bashing cryptos and they generally look a lot like christine lagarde and a lot like uh warren buffett they're just old they've got to a point in their age and i'm not bashing old people you know some people might consider me old but i remember my grandparents and i particularly remember my mum it's hard to try and tell her about cryptocurrencies i've been onto her for a while and she's slowly starting to get it but she definitely wouldn't be rushing out to buy any cryptocurrencies she's just at at that age in her life where she doesn't need a whole lot of change she likes things the way they are the older you get the less you want to be constantly having to learn new things and do and again please don't come out and you know get all up in arms and make it out like i'm having to go at old people and that they don't like new stuff it's just harder for them to deal with they're slowing down in life i'm slowing down in life i can feel it i'm nothing like i was in my 20s but it's just really you know again the older generation who are just set in their ways and they're not looking for change they're the people who come out and bash crypto you won't find too many young people coming out and bashing crypto it's the complete opposite this is the future you're in the right space now it just comes down to have you done your homework have you invested in the right projects and do you have the stomach to hold through all this craziness because it could be another five ten years of craziness before crypto wins and it will win that is my that's my opinion i can't see it failing the older generation will fight it and fight it and the newer generation will come through and they will win and again now we got politicians they have to pick a side they can see what's you know what the popular things are and what aren't and i'm going to say this politician is going for the younger audience because he can see what's coming he wants them on board i brought you the story the other day about uh a quarter of uh people that are now getting into crypto are people over 60 years old we're even changing the old guard they are starting to come across and can see what's going on all right avalanche avalanche sorry avalanche if you want to say it i say avalanche i don't know why i said avalanche <coughs> excuse me polychain capital three arrows lead 230 million dollar investment in the avalanche ecosystem so again it's down a little bit but it has been pumping quite hard and it's kind of one of the hot coins at the moment a lot of those kind of l1s are really the hot ones at the moment and lots of money coming in and look out of nowhere kyber kyber network have launched uh on avalanche with a 5.8 million dollar liquidity mining program i'm still in kyber but wow they have just severely underperformed they are one of my worst performing coins and you know i haven't put too much into it which is really the only reason that i'm still holding on to it otherwise i would have got rid of it i really hope kyber network is going to come out and you know they need to do more with their marketing they need to come up with new things happening on the program their marketing's what's really let them down they've just got 
almost zero hype behind them. Whereas you went back to 2020, there was still a bit of hype around them and definitely 2017, 2018, there was a bit of hype around them and they've just been dying off and they're kind of going nowhere. So fingers crossed that Kyber Network can, but it's, it's the marketing. It's not so much the program. The program works. It's the marketing. There's no hype about them. There's no, you know, the, the oh God, I can't remember what it's called. Uh, the network that they came out with, the new decks, it just didn't garner enough excitement. And so, yeah, hence why the project hasn't done that well. Doesn't mean it's dead. It works. Uh, you know, there's definitely uh, money and I'm getting my rewards for it. It's just not great. And there's been very little price action coming from Kyber for quite some time. Doesn't mean it's going to last forever. But again, teaming up with Avalanche, they are the hot topic at the moment. Right, last but not least, RippleNet onboards UK-based Paydeck to expand in Africa and Latin America. So even though there's all this SEC stuff still going on, Ripple are out there, they're building you know, building networks, you know, expanding into other countries. It's hard to see that again anything really happens to ripple like uh, you know they probably get a slap on the wrist at worst and then that's it they are yeah off to the races i really do think ripple net uh will be used uh there's a lot of people that do it particularly when you watch a lot of those ripple videos i mean they they say some stuff and some of it seems completely outlandish but the way they deliver it makes you kind of believe sometimes depending on who you're watching but I have my position in Ripple, you know, I bought at, oh God, I think I bought at 21 cents, got a really good stack, it dumped to 19, I sold basically all of it, kicking myself for doing that, uh, and then bought back in for I think around sort of 80 cents. Uh, and again, that's, you know, sometimes you've got to learn some hard lessons. I got caught up in the FUD when it dipped to 19 cents, I should have bought more as opposed to sell but you know you live and you learn but i do think ripple's going to come out the other side and i do think they're going to do really well and i just get the feeling like you know again if you watched any of the ripple videos all these partnerships and things like that i think they are getting ready to explode and be a really big part in the financial future going forward you know whether they'll really be a a true investment yeah, I, I, don't get me wrong i think there's going to be price appreciation but I think they're going to have to come to you know some kind of price to make it stable because if it's super stable and unstable and all over the place, it doesn't make a really good uh, form to transact in. But we'll have to wait and see. Still positive news moving into Africa, Latin America, places where there's a lot of unbanked and that's really where there's a lot of growth to come from. Hence why Cardano headed over into Africa and things like that. Right, that's it from me. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're all on that game train and I'll see you next time.